co-host Delegate Michael Heights. Good morning, uh, you finely dressed Southern gentleman, you. <laughs> Good morning, sir. It's good to be here. And uh, your clothing twin, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney, another finely dressed Southern gentleman, Mr. Matt Harvey. Good morning. This is totally coincidental. I don't know. It looks pretty coordinated to me. <laughs> it might be a little coordinated. We might have. <laughs> hey, let's wear this. When I look at the two of you, I get hungry for chicken. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like I should get a bucket of chicken right now. With the seven herbs and spices. Crispy. Extra crispy. Extra crispy. Where's the secret ingredients to making this show delicious? Oh, you know what? I like that, Harvey. I'm going to keep that. I may use that in an opening coming up a day near near you. Yeah. Uh, we well, have, anyway, it's good to be back, by the way. It's, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. Where you been? Working. Okay, and I was out of town. Yeah, I thought so. It was one Once, day out of town. But I was working, but working yeah. as well. Uh, Mr. Height, uh, pinch hitting for New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, who is in Greece as we speak. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've seen some posts. He seems like he's having fun over there. Yeah, have you been to Greece? I have not. You were on the other side of the Mediterranean in Italy. I was, yes. Uh, last uh, year. But I would, I would like to go to Greece. That would be great. Our first guest on the program is Congressman Alex Mooney, candidate as well for the U.S. Senate seat. And uh, that is uh, going to be contested uh, in the fall at some point by a, a Democrat. But uh, right now he's in a primary race with Governor Jim Justice. Alex, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you. Great to have you with us. I see by some mailers that have gone out that on May 2, you have a rally in Carnesville with Senator Ted Cruz scheduled. Yes, we're excited for that. It's a rally. It's, it's free. We're just trying to remind everyone how important it is a vote in this upcoming Republican primary. While there is a general election in November, as you said, let's be realistic here. This election is the primary. Joe Manchin has chosen to retire. Even he realized he couldn't win in West Virginia as a Democrat. And um, the seat of you know, the state went 70 percent for Trump both times. I mean, whoever wins this May 14th Republican primary is going to be the next U.S. senator. So we're having the rally on May 2nd, and it's really nice of ted cruz to come out here he's got a race of his own down there in texas he's the only target basically of the democrat party in the whole country but it works out because he's in dc so he's gonna come out here real quick do a do a rally for me before he heads back to texas so very excited for that is there anything scheduled debate wise between now and election day with you and governor justice hey man would you schedule one he won't do it people have asked (laughs) i've asked i've challenged him many times i've gone to these forums I think I went to like literally 10 Republican forums this past week alone. Doddridge, Barber, Webster, Summers. Oh, gosh, the list goes on. Um, he won't go to any of them. He won't show up where I am. He refuses to debate me. He's hiding. He's hoping people don't remember how liberal he is. But ask him. Ask him to debate. Ask him to come on your show. Ask him to do anything. He won't do anything. It's, it's, uh, it's really uh, unfair to the voters to not be able to uh, ask him questions. So. Look, I'll just say where I stand on the issues, I'll contrast. He doesn't, you know, want to contrast, but I have no choice but to remind the voters the differences between he and I on the actual issues that that matter to them. What does your polling data tell you in regards to this race, Alex? Well, look, first of all, polling is kind of like a name ID thing until the voters focus in and look at, uh, you know, look at the actual records of the two candidates. It's getting closer. It's getting a lot closer. I think he's very vulnerable, um, you know. So, a lot of voters really just and I look. I have I get I actually gave a I think it was an eight minute speech at a Lincoln Day last week, and and after I was finished the speech, I walked out. Someone started asking me about my campaign for governor. I said I'm running against Jim Justice, but I'm not running for governor. I'm running for U.S. Senate. And they, oh yeah, that's right. So, and this is after I gave my speech. After, so a lot of people don't really focus in until the end. There's a lot of undecided voters out there. I have found in my polling that. A lot of people who said they might vote for Jim Justice are now not going to vote for him. You said you got one of my mailers reminding voters how liberal the man is. You know, when I was cutting taxes with Donald Trump in 2017, I stood with Trump for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. He was trying the largest tax increase in the history of West Virginia, which the Republican legislature has killed, um, defeated that, which also, by the way, there are over 30, over 30 members of the Republican House of Delegates that have endorsed me. Over eight state senators in West Virginia have endorsed me. You know how many have endorsed Jim Justice? Actually zero. Not one. He can't find one person who's an elected official to endorse him in the House of Delegates or Senate. So he has done battle 
as a liberal. He's basically a Democrat. Remember, he was elected as a Democrat in 2016, didn't even vote for Donald Trump in 2016. He hedged his bets. And when Trump won, oh, then he cozied up. But uh, he has his bets. You know, he didn't even vote for Trump. So we're dealing with a guy here who wants to hide. He's trying to hide. He won't debate me. I mean, really, you work, get together with all the radio networks and host a debate. And honestly, if he won't show up, Rob, have it anyway. I'll still show up. I'll still show up and debate. But you should challenge him. He's getting away with this. And, and frankly, this isn't a criticism, but the, the media is not really pushing him to debate. They're letting him hide. Well, that's a fair point. Uh, I'm not sure what's been done statewide. I don't have... You know, we don't have meetings that they they call me and say, hey, Rob, here's what we're doing in Charleston or Huntington or Morgantown. But I know that uh, the last time we had Governor Justice scheduled, uh, I got a text, uh, I think the night before that he was sick, wouldn't be able to make it. And we've not uh, been able to reschedule him since. Uh, you mentioned the House of Delegates. One of those delegates is here right now. I don't know if he's endorsed you or not, but uh, Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, Mike. Hey, so you mentioned earlier a uh, contrast in in a in a primary that that is key because uh, a lot of uh, candidates are going to be saying the same thing. So go ahead and and uh, explain the contrast between you and Governor Justice and what sets you apart. Well, thanks, man. You know, I voted to repeal Obamacare. In my view, the government getting interfering and taking over a healthcare system is a bad idea. Obamacare is not working. So I vote. I stood there with Trump, and we voted to repeal Obamacare. Unfortunately, three Republican U.S. senators, you remember John McCain did his famous thumbs down thing on the Senate floor. And because three rhino liberal Republicans voted with the Democrats, we never repealed Obamacare. And, and Jim Justice came out during that time and attacked the Republican Party, criticized us for our attempts to repeal Obamacare. He's all for Obamacare. He said we need it. We rely upon it. He's a big government guy. You know, he vetoed that bill y'all passed to let people choose whether or not to vaccinate. You know, if he was the people who don't even go to public schools, like private school students or, or virtual students, you know, they should have a right whether or not to vaccinate. He vetoed that bill. I completely disagree with that. And then, look, if you look at the ads he's running now, if you listen to the ads he's running now, he's attacking me, right, on his TV and radio ads, he's attacking me. And the reason he's attacking me is because I do not vote for the Joe Biden trillion-dollar spending bills. Look, there are things in those bills I like. Every, every trillion-dollar bill has some things you might like, funding for roads, veterans, other, you know, wall repair money, other things like that. I support those things. I've voted for those things in the past. But if we keep giving Joe Biden trillion-dollar spending bills when he's running his woke agenda on this country, sex change operations in the military, uh, FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago, not holding them accountable, not building the wall. We don't even get to build the wall. He's doing everything except building the wall. And, look, most Republicans or many have got the guts to vote against these spending bills. I do. I vote against them. He attacks me for that. I mean, that's what he's attacking me for. Two years ago in the race against David McKinley, Jim Justice actually ran TV ads because I wouldn't vote for the non-infrastructure bill, the $1.3 billion non-infrastructure bill that most Republicans voted against. He attacked me for that. This guy believes in big government, more spending. Our debt, people don't talk about this enough. Our debt is $34 trillion. The interest rates have gone up. Right now, the interest on our debt in this country is more than it costs to fund the entire military of the United States of America. For the first time in history, we're paying more on interest payments on our debt than to fund our military. And it keeps going. It keeps going. So unless Republicans like me are actual conservatives, and this is my voting record. This isn't like personal tax. Or whatever. This is my actual voting record. I have voted against all those Biden spending bills. The first, the first bailout bill he did, the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, that was when COVID first hit. You know how Democrats are. Never let a crisis go to waste. And, and Biden ran through a $1.9 trillion spending bill with all sorts of Green New Deal, total a lot of debt. Every Republican U.S. senator voted against it. Literally every Republican U.S. senator. Guess who endorsed it and said we needed it? I was all for it. Jim Justice. Jim Justice. He, was, he, was, he would literally be the most liberal U.S. senator when it comes to spending. We have to remind people of this. You know, I mean, I know he worked with you guys on other issues and he did some stuff that, that's positive. But we have to remind people how liberal this man really is. He's really still a Democrat. I, mean, I could go on, but you know, those are some good examples. You mentioned some, uh, some like uh, attack ads, um, and I see attack ads coming out from what I would consider both camps, but not necessarily because a lot of these attack ads are coming from PACs, and they're not necessarily associated with the Mooney camp or the Justice camp. Um, how do people differentiate from? what is actually coming from your camp or the justice camp and what's coming from what I would say like dark money packs. He said the club for growth has endorsed me in it. And last year they ran some ads 
basically criticizing him for supporting all the Biden spending. I, I recall those ads were, and that's factually accurate. Um, there's other groups, the other super PACs out there that I think are part of the establishment in D.C. that have run ads attacking me. And frankly, they, if you look at the ads, they, they say, I wasn't born in West Virginia. I'm a West Virginian by choice. That's actually true. I chose to move to West Virginia. I think that was a great choice that I made. My wife and I and my three kids, we live in Jefferson County. My, my youngest baby was born in Charleston. I've been elected five times by the wonderful voters of West Virginia. Uh, I represent half the state. But, yes, I'm a West Virginian by choice. So, I mean, well, they, they attacked me for that. I think it's kind of silly. I mean, I don't think most voters have a problem with the fact that some people choose to move into West Virginia. Look, I, my mother wasn't even born in this country. You know my mom. My mom was born in Cuba. She had to flee here when she was 19 to live in freedom. Great lady. So, yeah, I don't, I don't have, you know, David McKinley, my last opponent, said, oh, I'm a seventh-generation West Virginian. Well, it's not my fault I'm not a seventh-generation West Virginian. My mom had to flee a country to come to freedom. My father's a feisty Irishman from New York. But that's that you know that's the as they run it's kind of personal nature and then you got really got to look at the voting because when they say this is why I explained it up front when they when they lie and they say I didn't support certain groups and certain people that's because they're wrapped in these trillion dollar spending bills that it's I think it's derelict in your duty to give Joe Biden a trillion dollars to frankly ruin this country with no accountability you know you know you got you got abuses everywhere in the, in the business community you're starting to see the Department of Environment the EPA now overregulate. In the past, they've gone after coal viciously, and you know we, I just wouldn't vote for spending bills that wage a war on coal. So, I mean, the folks do have to do their research, and I know it's kind of hard because there's so much material out there. We have this Republican primary coming up. It's probably the most competitive Republican primary in all the races in the West Virginia has ever seen because our state's so Republican now. You know, you serve in the House of Delegates. It's overwhelmingly Republican. The problem is whether or not it's Republicans. The problem is whether or not we got conservatives there. So we need actual conservative Republicans. Uh, I should mention I've been endorsed. Well, of course, Ted Cruz endorsed me. As you mentioned, he's coming to town. Senator Mike Lee endorsed me. And Senator Rand Paul has endorsed me. Those are the three that have endorsed me. Whereas the establishment that's running, running some ads on justice's behalf, they've, they're all for my opponent. So this is, this is <clears throat> if you look at the country right now, there's no other competitive U.S. Senate Republican primary. Ohio's over. Pennsylvania, the guy's not really strongly opposed. Actually, that's over anyway. So Montana, there's no opposition there. This is this is the marquee race between a, a liberal rhino, a former Democrat, and I not to say former Democrat because we want people to become Republican that are conservative. Jim Justice was a Republican younger in life, became a Democrat to run for governor, switched back to Republican to run for re-election. God only knows if he'll stay Republican. He might become a Democrat again. So maybe he switched multiple times, not just one time. Matt Harvey. Good morning, Congressman Mooney. How are you? Good morning, Matt. Good, man. I'm good. Hey, I, I know that you represented uh, the northern half of West Virginia for all those years, and now you're you're seeking to represent the southern half as well. Uh, I'd just like to get your view on the differences between those two geographic regions, or if there is one, in your opinion, on the issues. Well, they're very heavy on coal in the south. My first two years in office, I was on the Natural Resources Committee, and I have a strong record fighting for coal. I actually put in a bill called the Stream Act that would stop I mean, about the uh, Barack Obama, I almost feel like, talk about history, when, when Barack Obama was president. It seems like it was so long ago. But remember, Barack Obama was president when I was first elected in 2015 and 2016, and he made it very clear he wanted a war on coal. He wanted a war on coal, and he was using, he was abusing the administrative branch to try to shut down the coal industry with overregulating it, making it very expensive. So anyway, I put a bill called the Stream Act. And he, Obama had a regulation where if there was a trickle of water uh, within 100 yards of coal mining, that you couldn't coal mine. And that was an overreach of the Department of Interior. They didn't have a right to do that. It would have shut down the remaining coal mining jobs. We've lost about half our coal mining jobs, by the way, 28,000 to about 14,000. And that's a huge hit. The folks down in the southern half of the state, those are good-paying jobs, those coal mining jobs. Not to mention it keeps the lights on, and it's, it's a great thing to do. And it's clean. Coal is 90% cleaner than it was before. If we don't mine it here, we send it to China. China, it's way dirtier. So, you know, all the left-wing environmental activist reasons that are anti-coal are ridiculous. And I have fought for coal miners. I put a bill in, and we actually stopped that stream buffer zone rule, which almost took effect. We delayed it enough with my legislation. We had hearings. Uh, we, we tried to restrict the funding. And we delayed it long enough that after the 2016 election, Trump won, and he put a stop to that uh, stream act, stream buffer zone regulation, which would have destroyed the remaining coal jobs. So I remind people of that. You know, people down south, 
they're, they're, you know, like the whole state, there's people of faith. People down south, are, are the southern half of the state, are very religious, as am I. They, they want pro-life. I'm the most pro-life candidate in this race. I've been endorsed, by the way, by West Virginia Citizens Defense League. It's um, the largest pro-Second Amendment organization in the state. After a shooting incident, Jim Justice called for some gun control efforts. He wanted to raise the age to 21 to buy sporting rifles. And I make it clear to folks, gun control doesn't work. You know, gun control makes crime worse, not better. And when a politician like Jim Justice calls for gun control after a shooting, you know that he isn't, doesn't understand the Second Amendment. And the folks in the southern part of the state, really everywhere, I'd say most issues are the same everywhere, but Matt, really, people want, you know, to be free. They don't want to be censored. Even though we're doing now, we're having free speech here. This is wonderful. This is like a free speech exercise. My mom's home country of Cuba, there's no free speech. And if the left had their way, man, they were throwing people off the Internet, Facebook. I mean, they, I'm not sure they believe in free speech anymore, unless it's speech they already agree with. And there's some censoring going on. But people want their freedoms. They don't want to be forced to, to vaccinate if they don't want to. That's what I'm finding. By the way, congratulations, Matt. You're unopposed, right? That's the way to run, man. Unopposed or scared. <laughs> yeah, I am unopposed. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. great. Congressman Alex Mooney, yeah. our guest here on the program. Alex, you were listed as uh, not voting in this U.S. aid package for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Why is that? Oh, that was a Saturday vote last Saturday, and I had some previous commitments throughout West Virginia. I was actually uh, uh, out of town the day before as well. I was in West Virginia, frankly, making appearances for this, uh, my Senate race. So I wasn't there, but I had voted against the previous uh, amendments to fund Ukraine. And look, and what I'm, and I had voted for the Israel bill and that we had passed a, Israel to, a bill to support Israel earlier. It was sitting in the Senate, $16 billion. So all these bills passed, frankly, overwhelmingly, 300 some votes to 50 or 60 votes. So I, kn- I knew that they were going to, that they were, that was going to be the result. Um, but like, if you want to know my position, what I'm hearing from people, and I agree with this, is we shouldn't be giving money to other countries until we secure our border first. And this is, just goes back to all these spending bills issue I was talking about. We keep giving Joe Biden money. He does whatever he wants with it. <clears throat> and we don't hold him accountable. And I had thought, look, there's a lot of things I want to do before I vote for a spending bill. I've named some of them. The U.S. military, for example, is just one more example. They do sex change operations for people. We shouldn't be using the military for this woke social experimentation. Nobody should be... Our tax dollars shouldn't be going to change people's body parts and try to make a man out of a woman. That's ridiculous. So, uh, But it, it's funded right now. It's happening today. The U.S. military pays for sex change operations. Absolutely ridiculous. I'd like to shut that off. Um, I, I, there's a lot more I'd like to do with our funding. But the one thing, the one thing I thought all Republicans, no matter whether you're a moderate Republican, conservative, or in the middle, was no more money for Joe Biden, for other countries' borders and other countries' wars until we secure our own border. Because it's being invaded. Eight million people have run across that border, maybe more. And we don't know who they are. Some of them want to hurt us. And so secure the border. Well, guess what? This bill last week doesn't do that. Doesn't even secure the border. We just gave in. That's one of the reasons I'm running for the U.S. Senate. Because it seems in the House, all too often, we try to do the right thing. The Senate says no. They don't want to secure the border. And the House just recedes to the Senate position. So I thought, why don't I go over there and be a senator? Because Joe Manchin was, wasn't doing a good job. Jim Justice is the same as Joe Manchin right now. And let's go over there and try to help the Senate be stronger, be more willing to fight for America. Would you be in favor of what Marjorie Taylor Greene was suggesting in removing the current speaker? No, I'm not. I'm not in favor of that. We, we, we tried that once. <laughs> okay, and look at the difference, right? And it's not just the speaker. The speaker doesn't decide everything. Okay, it's the group. There's 221 Republicans, and a, lot, a handful of those Republicans are aggressively, aggressively uh, liberal, frankly, on the liberal side. And they will vote with the Democrats to do things. We've seen that happen before. That's, the, that's why I'm trying to stop Jim Justice from becoming a U.S. senator. The U.S. Senate, there's like 15 moderate liberal Republicans to vote with the Democrats, pass all these spending bills. It's not just the speaker or the leader of each party. It's the whole group. We need to elect conservatives who will fight up and down the line. And by the way, this primary, you elect your school board here. And I hear a lot of issues about schools when I'm traveling as a congressman for half the state or as a U.S. Senate candidate. I hear a lot of complaints about schools, what's in the school systems, what's in the libraries. The Board of Education is elected by the people. The people elect their representatives. And this is a very important time, and we have a chance to elect a conservative. But it's not just the speaker. So, I, I, look, this is the most conservative speaker we've had in a long time. He's, I think he's a good man. I don't agree with what he did, however. I don't agree that he, that he should have done that. But look at the votes. Even the votes were 300. There were 300. So 
the Ukraine vote, there were more Republicans against it and for it slightly. I think it was 110 to 100, something like that. But um, it's it's uh, switching speakers. I think we just see the same thing over and over again. What we need to do is just is just actually, you know, elect Republicans and demand that they. So Jim Jordan wrote this book, Do What You Said You Would Do. That's the title of his book. And that's all I'm trying to do, Rob, man. Do what we said we would do. Implement the platform of the Republican Party, United States of America. Cut spending. Balance the budget. Protect family values. We need to elect people up and down the board that do that. To cut spending would mean at some point along the way you've got to tackle Social Security and Medicare because there's not enough left in the other 17% that's considered discretionary once you back out the military budget and those social programs. So how do you get spending at the federal level under control, Alex, if nobody will talk about Medicare and Social Security? That's an issue that, that both parties have talked about historically over the years, and the idea is to protect it because – Fortunately, folks are living longer these days, and uh, there's been proposals that you know Bill Clinton has supported and Paul Ryan that would that would make it solvent going forward. So it's a matter of making sure that we explain to folks this is a matter of keeping it solvent because if we don't make some adjustments to keep it solvent in the future, it won't be. Uh, but it is you know it's something that, that that both parties have to come together on and, and realize this is where we're at. <clears throat> I think what would force that issue would be a balanced budget amendment. We do need a balanced budget amendment. In this country, most states have it. West Virginia has, I think, all but one state has a balanced budget amendment. And I, I think the discipline to make the cuts we need to make uh, in, in order to, in, in the discretionary spending I'm talking about, but in order to balance our budget to make the reforms we need to make would come if we had a balanced budget amendment. Uh, we learned in an interview, I think it was yesterday, that 500,000 res residents of West Virginia are on Medicaid, which is obviously largely funded by federal dollars. If we reduce federal spending, what would that do to West Virginia with that many people currently on Medicaid in this state? Well, what I'd say to that is, is we've we've tried to put, uh, you know, well, really make sure there's Social Security disability, which, you know, people get on. we got to make sure that they're actually disabled if you're on disability. Um, but no one's talking about cutting Medicaid. Um, there, there, there's been talks about letting the states have more authority over how Medicaid is spent, so it can be spent more efficiently, and they can make sure the right people are getting the services they need. That's been a big debate over whether the states get to uh, uh, oversee how Medicaid dollars are spent and, and create some savings that way. Um, but you know, people, every time there's like a government, understand those are those are uh, mandatory programs, and every time there is a fight over discretionary spending, they uh, they want to get into Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, but those are those are mandatory programs. They're not affected by a government uh, shutdown, so to speak, because that's mandatory programs. So those are mandatory programs. We'd have to look at, you know, what if the state, whether or not the state could do it better. I know Republicans have pushed that in the past, letting the states, there could be a lot of savings if the states um, looked, at, uh, looked at operating Medicaid themselves. Hey, I know we're just about out of time uh, as you need to get to your next thing. Uh, final uh, minute is yours, uh, Alex. Uh, go ahead and talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you over Jim Justice. West Virginia deserves a conservative U.S. senator. My actual voting record in 10 years as a congressman in beautiful West Virginia proves that I'm a conservative. Most people don't debate that, frankly. I'm a solid conservative. I have voted that way. I'm willing to stand up to the woke leftism in this country. My opponent is a liberal. My opponent is still basically a Democrat. He will vote with Chuck Schumer. He's proven that in his, all of his, his attempts to raise taxes, his, his COVID lockdowns. He doesn't share the passion that I have for our freedoms. If you want a conservative, I'm your only choice for the U.S. Senate. Jim Justice is a liberal. He will disappoint you all the time if you're a Republican. So I ask for your vote based on my actual voting record. Alex, thank you very much for your time this morning. Much appreciated. You betcha, man. Great show. Say hello to your mom for us. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. <laughs>